All right, so today we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the wheelman in one of these 4840s we have. I think we're gonna install it on that one right there. Number three. So this is the flex kit. I went ahead and downloaded a manual. Uh, the 4840 actually isn't on there, so I'm gonna have to kind of, they said if you could use some spacers and extra things to figure it out, and it probably work. So, or should work. This is the box of goodies. Lots of different things in here. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so I just kind of got everything broken out. So we got the wiring. There's the antenna that goes on the top. Our remote IMU. The main gear. Looks like some uh, spacers and stuff to help with that. There's the anti-rotation. The kill switch, and then of course right there is the flex kit itself. So since we're using older tractors, and you know, obviously the manual doesn't cover those older tractors, we're going to have to modify this a bit, but this is the anti-rotation device. Uh, at this point we're trying to figure out how to do it. Um, I'm not going to put the anti-rotation device on first, because I'm not quite sure what our distances have to be. So instead I'm going to go ahead and put on the main gear and everything else beforehand to give me an idea of the distance of how far this can be because if I could, I could probably put it on the plastic and be okay but then I wouldn't be able to move the steering wheel at all so if I can get it onto this metal piece here and I might just end up cutting cutting out here and then putting a hole here that would match that hole there and make that work so we'll have to wait and see so the next thing is to go ahead and install the main gear. I had to remove the four screws. I just put one back in. Um, it kind of clamps in place and then I'll put the other, other ones in to give me a better idea of where it needs to go. Okay, so I ended up going with, uh, I really like this one because it fits snug, but it fit too snug and these things bent out. And then I wasn't able to line up the holes correctly. Um, so I had to go with the universal one. So I just tried to make sure it was centered all the way across. And then I, took my measuring tape and it's just about six inches to the end there you can kind of see this one's a little harder to do because it has that thing on there I couldn't get it off right now but it's also part about six inches so I think I got it centered pretty well I'm gonna go ahead and put the other three screws in I have it set up fairly tight right now so I could kind of push around just very little and nudge it to get it to where it was centered Okay, so we were able to get this installed. Didn't have to use any of the spacers. As you can see, it does move freely. It's not affecting anything. Um, <clears throat> I put the pin in. You got to be careful because there are a few different holes here. You got to remember. So some of them are just like screw holes, and so just kind of feel them back there. Uh, this is the pin right here. Um, and when I did my measurement, it was just a little under three inches. So I think. I can actually do what I was going to do, cut this bracket back here a little bit and put a screw right there and I should be good to go. So the gap between the two things was just a little bit too large so we did have to modify it some. I also went ahead and threaded that hole there. That way we've got something to attach it to. I just used a uh, 5 sixteenths by I think it's 18. Yeah, by 16th by 18. And I ended up having to use pliers to do it because there's not much of a gap there to spin it around. Okay, so there's an original one. And this is what we modified it to. We cut it off, we put a new bend in it, rewalled it, and stuck a hole right there. So because this 4840 does not have a telescopic thing, like I said, we did have to shorten that so you can see. Left yourself a little bit of gap there. Uh, that was, as I said before, I, I threaded it through and then I put a bolt on the back side. It's kind of a pain to do, um, but I was able to finally get it. And so now I'm ready to hook it up and see if it works. All right, so there's the thing in. Like I said, it's pretty close to the thing since it's not, it doesn't have the uh, telescoping thing. Uh, the modified piece was probably still a little too tall because it kept hitting. It's kind of hard to see, but hitting the edge of that because it kind of hangs down. Um, 
but I guess with this way, it is out of my way of my knees. Uh, the steering wheel will not go down any further than that, so that's kind of where the steering wheel has to stay, unless we modify something here. Um, but yeah, I think we've got it in successfully. We've got the anti-rotation in, so ready to plug some stuff in and try it out. So we decided we wanted to be able to see the gauges and stuff because that really blocked them off. So this is the new modification for that thing. So we've really shortened it up quite a bit. Again, put that hole right there in the middle. And we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. Okay, so we finally got this in. You can see, you can see most of the gauges. The uh, RPM is a little hard to see. But with this system, you build know how fast you're going anyways. Um, when you feel it on your phone. So underneath here. I ended up having to flip those around the other direction because they got too close to that edge there, so I had to spin them on the top. But you can see that it is actually clearing everything now. So I think we have it where we want it. And now we're going to have to duplicate it for the other two tractors. So. so I went ahead, I pulled this panel off. This is on the right-hand side by the seat. Uh, your uh, emergency brake is right there. And we're going to put the piece right here on this end. Um, there's a metal plate underneath this that's about two and three quarters. Um, so I'm going to make sure that the holes are past that point, probably at the three inch mark. But I figure it's going to be easier to do it this way than try to install it underneath that edge. And plus, by being underneath that, it should be uh, a little better protected and out of the way. So there's where I ended up installing it. I drew a line there. You can kind of see the backside to line it up a little better. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in now. So there's the final product. You can see it would have been really a pain to get by this emergency brake. So it's right down there. And I just used a big long extension. I worked out pretty well to get those five, six, five, I think it's five bolts in. Okay, so final modifications for this anti-rotation uh, device. Uh, we gapped those out pretty well, uh, mostly because you can see that that plastic's pretty thick back there, and we wanted the steering wheel to come down a little bit. And then when the wheel comes down, you can actually see the gauges a little more, um, now that we've got it adjusted a little bit. So, we'll get that installed. So you can see the steering wheel's up right now, and then it comes down, it catches in there, and you see the gap between those two, that's that plastic. So we didn't have to modify any of that plastic piece. Um, there is a nut on the back side of this bolt to hold it in place, uh, just to give it a little more. And it's it's pretty solid there, it's not going anywhere. All right, so the antenna, we just went with the, the basic antenna. Uh, it does have a plate, metal plate and uh, adhesive here uh, that you can use, but since this is a metal roof, I didn't go ahead and do that. Um, and this is an articulator tractor, um, so according to them, or what I read online, uh, you're supposed to be in the center of the front wheels, um, which is obviously not possible unless you were to build a plate out. Um, and they just said to mount it on your, your cab roof, and then uh, in the app go ahead and say what distance it is away from the, the center of that main axle, the front. So as you can see, I've made some marks to help me center this thing. I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Uh, this piece does come off. It screws out. And I'm going to go ahead and probably face it towards the back. But you can see that that piece just comes right out. So I'll go ahead and take that piece off first. Line it up where I want it. And we'll put that back. Yeah, that hit pretty fast. And it is really hard to move. Holy cow. Okay. So I'm going to work on getting that centered. And then once that's centered, I'll go ahead and put this back on. Turn it around whichever way I need to turn it. So that's facing the back. Because uh, I think I want the wires to go towards the back. All right, so I got it mounted. Um, yeah, it's really hard to move at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave it where it is at the side. I tried a couple different times to move it around, it didn't work. And so I'll just go ahead and hook up wires now. Alright. So the cabling for the system is, I mean, 
it's super easy. You can't mess this up. Every single one of these connections is different. Um, so you, you can see, like this connection here is going to go right there. And you get a triangle connection and a rectangular connection. And so the rectangular one's going to go into your IMU. Uh, attaches on the other side of the IMU. And then you got a kill switch, which I believe is going to be your triangular one. Um, it's not up here right now. And then this little guy is your antenna we just installed on top of the roof. And as you can see, they give you plenty of wire to run everything everywhere. So I got that one going up to the antenna in the top. There's the wire there. Uh, with these round connectors, look at the tabs. Line those tabs up, it should slide down just a little bit, and then you just twist it, hand tighten it. Um, don't use any tools. And just to kind of show you, so this last one here, this is that kill switch. Um, and so all you're doing is just lining up. <clears throat> so you see that tab there. And then that tab there. You can only really go one way, and then you just push until they click. So if you heard that click, then you know it's in. So that one's done. So everything connected other than the battery. Um, and then this has a bracket I got to install somewhere, figure out where that's going to go. Then I'll be ready. So I just hooked directly into the battery cables. I picked this cable up, put it on the very bottom underneath that one, and the same for the negative. And there's the wire going up. And let's go through the window because there really aren't any holes or gaps that I could find to go through. As for the power switch, as you can see, it's a good sign, the light's on. But I just simply Found a screw, made sure that it wasn't in the way of anything, so when I'm in low, it's back here. When I'm in a high, it's, it's up there even further, so it shouldn't get in the way of the power switch. So, let's see what we got. So there's power there. That's a good sign. So I think we're in business. And the cables are still a mess right now, but I'll get that fixed here in a little bit. So, yeah. Hope you found this helpful. As for the power switch, as you can see, it's a good sign. The light's on. But I just simply found a screw, made sure that it wasn't in the way of anything. So when I'm in low, it's back here. When I'm in a high, it's it's up there even further. So it shouldn't get in the way. So, let's see what we got. So there's power there. That's a good sign. So I think we're in business. And the cables are still a mess right now, but I'll get that fixed here in a little bit. So, yeah. Hope you found this helpful.